again, it is Derek and we are out in my backyard. And I wanted to show you some of my favorite kind of ultralight hammocks. Now, what I've got in here are, you know, I've tested probably most of the ultralight hammocks out there and I want to kind of show you uh, how they all compare, where I kind of feel like my favorites are. Now, anything ultralight, it does come with, you know, there's, there's a balance. Because anytime you try to shave weight, you're oftentimes cutting maybe the dimensions of the fabric, you're making things smaller, maybe less feature rich, and, and that's okay. You know, you get down to just the brass tacks, what do you need? So these hammocks do not have anything but the hammock. There's no bug netting, there's no zippers or anything extra, it's just the hammock. So bear that in mind, if you're going camping with any of these, uh, there are additions to, and, and that's where kind of ultralight hammock camping really takes a weight penalty because as you add on all of the elements, you begin to, you know, add weight. All of that's on the table. And speaking of on the table, let's talk about what I have in my bag. So I was recently given a uh, this by Eno to test. So full disclosure, I was given a, a, this is a test sample. You know, this is the sub six. This has been out for a while. there have been a, a little bit of facelift upgrades in the last few years. And I'm going to point out some of those. I've also got the, the Kamek Roo single ultralight. One of my very first ultralight hammocks was the Grand Trunk. You can even see uh, some of the old logos here, the Grand Trunk. This is their ultralight. This one, I don't even think they make it anymore. This is the Sea to Summit Ultralight Solo or Single. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that one. Uh, this one is actually kind of a cool. This is a, uh, I think it's Polish. It's Lesovic Ultralight and also a pretty cool hammock. So we're gonna, let's take a look at each one of these and I'm gonna kind of compare them and show them uh, which are my favorites. So let's start with uh, we're gonna I'm gonna kind of do a quick chart so which ones are the lightest which ones are the most comfortable so let's start with the lightest so the lightest on my list is a tie between uh, Grand Trunk and Sea to Summit at 152 grams pretty awesome in terms of lightweight uh, next would be the Kamek Roo at 160 grams the Eno Sub-6 at 166 grams, and then the Lesovic at 180 grams. So in terms of lightweight, lightest, heaviest, but they're all within you know, 20 grams of each other, give or take. Uh, now, the weight alone is a bit deceiving because these all have different dimensions. So let's talk about, let's go from uh, biggest in terms of total dimensions to the smallest. So biggest hammock is the Lesovic. We'll put the biggest on this side. Uh, followed by, let's see, kind of have a tie between, uh, yeah, the Grand Trunk and the Eno are, so the, the Lesovic, this one is 118 by 57 inches. Uh, the Grand Trunk and the sub, the Eno sub six, they are both nine feet by four feet. So 108 by 48. Then we have, um, let's see, the, the Sea to Summit is 102 inches by four feet. And then the smallest of all the hammocks is actually the uh, Kamek Roo. So probably no surprise that the biggest hammock is also the heaviest, uh, but then kind of interesting mix in here, right? Right in the middle is the Eno. Now, let's talk about comfort. To me, um, I, I've been known to say that any hammock is better than sleeping on the ground. I need to amend that just a little bit because it's not 100% true. I've actually slept in hammocks where I probably would have been more comfortable on the ground. I know that sounds like heresy coming from a hammock guy, but uh, like I said, my journey, I, I'm not opposed to going to the ground. I, I can sleep on the ground. It's okay. It's not uh, the worst thing in the world. And some of these hammocks, like when I, one of my first, the Grand Trunk, when I started in this hammock, I, I thought it was awesome, but then it really, the fabric really started to stretch. And 
I would get really uncomfortable. My and, and what I mean by uncomfortable, I'm still trying to sleep diagonal. There, there is a trick to sleeping in small hammocks. I actually have no problem with, you know, a nine foot hammock by four feet is, in my opinion, still perfect dimensions. You may need to hang it at a bit of a shallower hang angle. So that typical 30 degrees is not optimal for a small hammock. You probably want to go more like a 20 degree or, you know, just a nice shallow. It doesn't have to be totally flat, of course, but, but not as deep as maybe 30 degrees. But still, this one would stretch out to where my shoulders would really bow in and I would start to actually sink into the middle. You couldn't even sleep diagonally for the full night. And this became a little bit uncomfortable. So in terms of uncomfort, we're going to put the Grand Trunk Nano at, this is the, the side that is uh, the, the least comfortable. The other one that I found also not very comfortable was this one, uh, Sea to Stomach. Now this one, this hammock was interesting because when it first came out, it it features this really weird fabric that I know a lot. In fact, I've got another ultralight hammock. I should have brought that one out. Uh, that it, this kind of, oh, I can't even remember what it's called. It almost looks like Tully, you know, this uh, very almost translucent fabric that uh, at first I was super excited about because it was supposed to be this really high tenacity type of fabric. Turns out that it is still pretty stretchy and so I've got two of these. This one's a Cordura, uh, Cordura fabric brand. Um, and it's it just stretches a little bit too much for my taste, which again, drives down the comfort for me. If you like more stretch, uh, then these are ones maybe you wanna look at. Let's see, uh, stretch, Midi medium stretch. So the Lesovic uh, still has a bit of stretch to it but not as bad, which is pretty good. Along with the Kamakuru, these are, well, I'd actually probably put the Kamakuru here as stretchy, Lesovic, and then uh, surprisingly, actually, the Eno is the least stretchy of all of those. Now, one of the reasons why, those of you that know fabric, you know, um, there's what's called warp and weft and how things are um, actually created, when fabric is created how the, the fibers interlace together, the, the bias of fabric, kind of like going off on the diagonal. So like, for example, you, you may not be able to stretch a fabric one direction or another because of how it, the loom has been put together, but across the diagonal, you might get a big stretch, which ironically can be a negative for hammock camping because what do we do? We sleep on the diagonal. And when you sleep on the diagonal, sometimes on the bias of that fabric, you can actually get more stretch than if you just slept in line. Ironically, yes. Again, could be a pro and a con, but just to make that aware. So fabrics that have a grid ripstop, like your typical square ripstop, they have more of a stretch along that bias because again, the bias is along the diagonal and that's where the stretch is. Um, the Eno, what I actually was surprised when I got this one, the the fabric is a diamond ripstop that means that the the warp and weft are you know 90 degrees or 45 to to the um the square of the fabric so the bias is not like when you lay diagonal you're actually laying where this there's not as much stretch right so it actually to me um sleeps more comfortably because i'm not lying on the bias of the fabric so awesome right here but this guy's got it just a regular grid ripstop along with these other ones so there's a little bit more stretch in these compared to the eno so uh i've got all the rest of the details you can go to my website theultimatehang.com to see um all of the i've got all of the my measurements again these are weights and measures that i've done so of all of my ultralight hammocks that I've tried and tested, including ones that I've spent a lot of money on, like these crazy ones with the crazy fabric, my favorite one to take out is actually the Eno Sub-6 for a couple of reasons. One, it's got that perfect dimension, nine feet by four feet. Uh, I can sleep diagonal. Because of the bias of this fabric, I sleep flat and comfortably on the diagonal, which is super awesome. So I also love, just a couple of quick things on this, it's got, it uses a toggle system for the suspension, which is very similar to uh, the new Roo uh, and uh, from Kamek as well. I really like the, the toggle system because it makes connecting 
to uh, suspension, you can see here some kind of similarities here. I really like that. It makes setup really easy, especially when you're using certain types of suspension systems. And it works really, really well. Now, one thing that Eno also sent me that pairs really nicely with any of these hammocks is this is their ridge line. Uh, this is an aftermarket ridge line, and it's just a 764 uh, Dyneema AM steel. It's been uh, reinforced on the ends. It's got a little fabric reinforcement on both ends. It's designed to, again, just kind of go over the ends of the hammock, like so. Kind of a, a mainstay for hammock camping, or, or just regular, you know, kind of hammock in general. What they do is they prevent the hammock from being pulled too tight. And you can therefore set the perfect, you know, once you have that perfect feel and lay of your hammock, use a ridge line that keeps that hammock from ever being pulled too tight and make setup a breeze. Cause you can just set up and basically pull that hammock kind of tight per se, uh, when you set up the suspension and you'll know that the hammock is always going to be just right. Um, a couple of things that I like about this, it's a little different than some of your typical ridge lines because a lot of people use this type of design. It's really just a big whoopee sling, right? I've got an adjustable end on one side, a fixed eye Brummel on the other side. But on the adjustable side, it is just a whoopee sling, but they have looped that whoopee sling onto a little separate eye, right, on this side. And what's nice about this, because typically where a lot of people have, you know, whoopee slings, they just have, you know, you, you basically have a big loop on one side. And, you know, you can loop that onto your hammock, but because it's a huge loop, uh, it tends to, to migrate, it can move, it can even slip off when you're packing from personal experience. So one thing I've done in that case is I've had to do something like, you know, done a lark's head or a cow or toe hitch, whatever you want to call that to attach it to the end of the hammock so it doesn't slip off or migrate. But when you do that, it's difficult, if not, not, not impossible, but very difficult to adjust because I've got it stopped here. Eno has solved that by making my attachment point separate from my adjustment. I love it. It's a brilliant idea, very well thought out, works great. Um, I don't know why they included a stopper bead, but they did. The stopper bead does not make a difference because I already have this loop that prevents the uh, whoopee sling from sliding out. And they also, of course, have your, I've talked about these before, this little metal stopper on the end. And you can see here, I have uh, I have a little bit of tail left. I've already set this to my perfected um, length for the sub six. So I just kind of lashed this around just to kind of tie it off so it doesn't adjust or move and when I'm ready to go I'm gonna put this on this hammock now you can leave this attached to your hammock I took it off here so I could weigh everything um, which I'm gonna do again because I love having this attached to this hammock I've taken this out a couple of times now going backpacking and again I love it it's so light pack so small and um, and it's so comfortable like again knowing what you know about me to me, this is very comfortable. If I'm just going, you know, my preferred ultralight backpacking, this is fine for me. Works great. Just add this ridge line to make setup a little easier. Maybe a tarp if I need one. Man, it makes backpacking so much fun and so much light. So let's go set this up. I'm gonna show you. There's really no surprises though. This thing is just small, it's a simple hammock but let's go and 